Hello everyone and I hope you're having a great day. Today we're going to make it even better with a product that is basically one of a kind. Right here we have Team Group's Siren Duo 360 IO for CPU and SSD. Basically a liquid cooler, all in one, that can cool CPU and SSD at the same time, all together. This is actually the first and only product this kind of type that exists. So this is quite cool and interesting to test out and it did run loads of benchmarks in variations and combinations to give you more insights on everything. Will it cool still if it's close to GPU? Will it cool if the CPU reaches 90-95 degrees? Well, we'll all find out that later on. For now, we're going to go through some specifications and I'm going to tell you how to actually place the Siren Duo 360 AOs, CPU and SSD and give you some insights about it. And then we're going to skip two benchmarks to give you the results. So basically what we have here is um, 360 AAO with 120 millimeter fans on top of the radiator in white, really looks nice, I do have to admit that. And uh, we already did the Siren GD360E, so you might have seen some similarities apart from not having the SSD mount. So it supports Intel LGA up to 1700 and CPU sockets up to AM5, SSD M.2 2280. So now we have to say the compatibility for the SSDs. CPU water block dimensions are 65.5 times 49 millimeters, block plate is copper and the block is aluminium. The SSD water block dimensions are 78 times 58 times 23.6. Block plate is copper and the block is aluminium. We have addressable RGB lights on the CPU and on the SSD block as well, making it look interesting. If you don't want to have addressable RGB on your block, you can just simply magnetically detach the lightning effects from the block and basically have it naked just pure white and actually it looks quite nice as it is. Now the pump speeds go up to 4000 RPMs plus minus 10%. Noise of the pump is maximum 22 decibels. Fan speeds going from 600 to 2200. Maximum uh, decibel noise is 39.5 decibels, which is quite a lot, but I'll tell you that later on. And the tube length, now this is interesting, from the radiator to the SSD water block is 430 millimeters. From radiator to CPU water block is 400 millimeters and CPU water block to SSD water block is 230. You get loads of accessories in terms of cable. So you get a one to three addressable RGB splitter, which does come in handy because you need to connect the SSD water block, you need to connect the CPU water block and you need to connect the fans as well. Fans can be daisy chained, which is good, and then only one cable comes out of it. So basically that's that. You also get a splitter for your PWM connection for the fans and that's all there is to it. So what do you say after going through all the specifications that you might need to know, let's check out how to actually do it. First of all, you place the fans on the radiator Quite simple, quite easy, you use the long screws and I would suggest placing the AIO on top. No front position because of the tube lengths. Maybe it would go through, but I didn't try, I placed it on top. So just to clarify that. Then place the bracket, for instance, uh, it comes stock with Intel bracket. I was using the AMD Ryzen 9 7900X, so I had to swap the bracket for holding it on the stock backplate of the AMD motherboard. So basically you just use two thumb screws instead of four for Intel and tie up those notches at the edges and that's all there is to it. Of course, remove the plastic foil and place thermal paste as you usually do, so don't forget to do that. Next to that, maybe it would be quite uh, logical to do this before placing the AIO inside, use grab the block and you get a thermal pad and you get the bottom locking mechanism with four screws. Place the SSD in there and place the thermal pad on top of it. After that, you push the SSD and the bottom plate to the water block and you have to tie up those four screws. Basically, after that, everything that is left is first position the SSD into the connection part and lower it down to the part where you need to tie up the screw to the motherboard. Now, 
in my situation the screw from the water block fitted with the threads on the motherboard but for some strange reason if that doesn't work you get additional standoff to replace the one on the motherboard and to place the original one from the team group giving you a possibility to tie up the ssd now i do have to say it's less than a millimeter from the ssd water block to the gpu and this is going to be interesting let's check out the thermals so I wanted to stress test the SSD maximum that I could. So I ran four benchmark one after other just to have a consistency in benchmarking and uh, trying to use varieties of benchmarks. So I used AIDA 64 disk benchmark, Autodisk benchmark, AS SSD benchmark and Crystal Disk mark. For 20 minutes they ran completely all together and without the Siren Duo 360 uh, the temperature went up to 43 degrees Celsius on Kingston KC3000. Now, why did I use separated SSD apart from Team Group? I wanted to actually test something else in terms of what they already did. So it does have it does have in some sort of a way point to use their SSD, but I really wanted to test some other SSD just in case to get varieties of benchmarks. On their website, you can check out the thermals most likely for the team group SSDs right here. I wanted to do this. So 43 degrees, 20 minutes, read speeds went up to 7,345 megabytes per second, while the write speeds went up to 5,440 megabytes per second. Now with the AIO, uh, for 20 minutes, the temperature went up to 25 degrees Celsius, and that's 18 degrees Celsius of difference, which means that this one really keeps it cool now of course i didn't push the processor here okay so we'll get to that part but the interesting thing is the speeds went up a bit not drastically too much but they did so 7375 megabytes per second read that's 30 megabytes per second more and 5472 megabytes per second in write that's 32 megabytes per second more which is outstanding of course it won't make a difference in this couple of thousands, tens won't do anything, but just to give you some more information. And now the best thing, the system stability test in AIDA64 Extreme Edition. So all boxes ticked, GPU, SSD, CPU, FPU, cache, and system memory. The CPU went up to 93 degrees Celsius after 10 minutes. GPU went up to 61. This is AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT pulls from Sapphire. The processor went up to 5300 MHz of clock speed, so you need to know that as well. And the SSD went up to 30 degrees Celsius. So it's still lower than the naked, let's put it this way, the naked SSD with the passive heatsink from the motherboard. Imagine if I ran a system stability test without the Siren Duo 360. Now this would be interesting, it would most likely go up to 46. But then again, the SSD actually has a passive heatsink, a very thin one on it, plus thermal pad, plus the massive cooler from the Siren Duo 360 and everything else. So basically, apart from the, let's compare it to a monoblock that covers the VRMs, the CPU, and eventually one, I think one monoblock only covers the SSD as well. This is quite handy. Because if something happens to your SSD and, or you want to swap it for a larger one or anything else, you just detach the SSD water block and you can access the SSD, swap it and that's all there is to it. With monoblock you have to detach the whole custom loop unless it's soft tubing, but that's a story for something else. Here the Siren Duo 360 from Team Group really does the job and it does it quite nicely. What I can conclude and what I can say is for some of you guys can't manage cables at the back, the tubes will be confusing for you, but they are really straightforward and it's quite easy to place the SSD water block as I already shown you. You're doing basically everything outside of the case, so the motherboard is inside, but placing the SSD in the water block or beneath the water block or however you want to say it, it depends on you of course, uh, but um, Rest is just placing the water block on the CPU, the water block on the SSD, well basically on the motherboard because the SSD is already beneath the water block and that's all there is to it. The rest you only have to connect the pump, you have to connect the addressable RGB lights, that's it, that's all there is to it. So big thumbs up for Team Group uh, by producing something that 
uh, only they produce. So this is the first one in the world and it's quite cool actually when you take a look at it closely a bit. Um, I'll put the links below for the Team Group T-Force Siren Duo 360 CPU and SSD all-in-one liquid cooling system. So you can check out the price, compatibility, but I already mentioned that, specifications which I also mentioned and you already got the benchmarks, right? So guys, hope you enjoyed this video. It's a bit different because it gives something new to the table and to your PC. Definitely new looks, but definitely an impressive cooling, which is always appreciated. And that'll be all for today. If you still didn't, I think you should subscribe, like, and click the notification bell for future content. Because as you can see, I'm pumping the videos each day. So yeah, every day a new content. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.